reason is a couple of years ago, Greg Fahey published a human clinical trial, a phase one study, which was a bit controversial among the aging uh, researchers. Um, why? Because he had developed a cocktail of human growth hormone, metformin, DHEA, and vitamin D, and administered it to um, these individuals and observed epigenetic rejuvenation. And um, now, Nia Basilei mentioned that that was due to metformin, but <laughs> um, in this talk we now talk about growth hormone. It, it was paradoxical. It's, it's, it was a conundrum. Why is it that increased levels of circulating IGF-1 in these adult males were associated with lower epigenetic age instead of the opposite, you know? And um, so, yeah, I, I like, therefore, this result that the liver-specific growth hormone knockout mice, which also um, obviously have lower IGF-1 levels, but they, there was no effect on epigenetic age. So in certain ways, we have de decoupled circulating IGF-1 levels from epigenetic clocks in these mice, you know, and, and in that clinical trial. And um, the punchline seems to be that timing is really everything. Um, so the, when you administer um, one intervention, during a developmental phase, let's say between weeks one and eight in a mouse, early postnatal development, um, that may be beneficial, but then later in life, that same intervention may actually be bad for you, you know? I mean, it's all trivial stuff, antagonistic pleiotropy, but I think that's what we observe also in these epigenetic clock studies. I talked a lot about dwarf mice, and yes, dwarf mice show slower epigenetic aging. But um, what about the opposite? There are these human um, disorders, human overgrowth disorders, um, such as Sotos syndrome and tatton brown raman syndrome, um, which have interestingly been shown to exhibit positive increased epigenetic age acceleration. So it's beautiful, right? Dwarf mice, slower epigenetic age, overgrowth disorders, increased epigenetic age. So overall, I think there's by now strong evidence that epigenetic clocks relate to this somatotropic axis. And um, I remind you, um, apart from dwarf mice, um, many of us have shown that caloric restriction um, slows epigenetic aging, or conversely, high-fat diet, obesity increases epigenetic age. So it all ties in with that idea. This is, um, I want to remind you, um, one of the strongest interventions to reset epigenetic age are the Yamanaka fa factors, OSKM. So here I show you the results for our pan-mammalian clock. Um, applied to human fibroblasts, and after 11 days of administering these OSKM factors, then we start to see the decrease. So maybe one needs to wait quite a while to, to see rejuvenation. Now I want to uh, talk about what um, I call gold standard perturbations of epigenetic clocks. Pro-aging, high-fat diet in, in mouse liver, you age the liver faster. Down syndrome. There are a couple of progeria that relate to um, epigenetic clocks, but not all. The market exception is Hutchinson Skilford. But, um, anyways, trisomy 21, no question. Now, anti aging, caloric restriction in mouse liver, and then I showed you the dwarf mice. And I want to briefly talk about parabiosis. Um, um, overall, it relates to this hallmark of aging that we call cell-cell communication. And there by now is quite some literature that says that yes, cell-cell communication very much affects epigenetic clocks. Um, there was one study by Harold Ketcher and um, Sangavi, um, Akshay Sangavi, who showed that a plasma fraction, a young plasma fraction administered to rats rejuvenated the rats. And um, then Vadim Gladyshev and Bohan Zhang um, have shown that parabiosis experiments in female 
um, female black um, six mice um, also show this rejuvenating effect. And then more recently, Consuelo Boras showed that um, stem cell derived extracellular vesicles uh, administered to mice rejuvenate various mouse tissues. And finally, there was a human clinical trial by James Clement that uh, showed that. So yeah, um, overall, um, so young blood in essence uh, uh, seems to, or young plasma um, uh, seems to rejuvenate several organs in multiple species.